Hello, in this video I'm going to be answering a question I received from a viewer and doing my best to answer it. So as always, if you have any advice for this person, please leave a comment in the comment section below because when you leave responses, when you leave feedback, other people do read the comments and so it does actually help other people because you know people look at the comments and they see what people say. Also, after I answer the question, I will show you this book. This book has a really cool signature on the inside. And that's, to me, that's what makes this book so special. Also, this is a very famous book. It's a very popular book. It's a very well-known book. It's called Introduction to Topology by Bert Mendelssohn. And it's a book on topology. It's a standard book on topology. It's got the standard outline. So if you were to take a course in topology, um, it, would, it would cover these core topics that are found in this book. But it's also signed by someone. And to me, um, you know, the way the signature is written, it just, I don't know, it just gives the book more history. You know, a big part of books for me is, you know, not just, you know, who, you know, who, who, who wrote the book, but who read the book and who worked from it, who sat there for, you know, hours, uh, days, you know, weeks working through the book and grinding through it and trying to understand it and doing exercises. I think that adds some history to the book. You know, it's part of the history of the book. Anyways, I digress. Let's take a look at this comment. So the question reads, well, the subject is mathematics and failure. The message reads as follows. Hello, my name is Ida. I've been watching your channel for a while now, and I love it. My question is, how essential can failure be while studying mathematics? Sorry to bother you, and thanks in advance. So I think that failure is something that you can't avoid in mathematics. It's something that is always going to be there. It's just going to keep happening the more math you do, and that's normal. I mean, I've known a lot of really, really smart people, and they all fail. So I, I think my answer is failure is part of mathematics. Now, is it essential to learning? Is that That's what you're asking. So in that case, I would say that you can learn from your failures, but you can also learn from your successes. In fact, when you figure out that that key step in a proof, when you know you figure out why you can go from you know this step to this step, or when you finally understand the reason that a certain step is true, or when you finally come up with a bright idea or a new technique, or you remember something from a previous proof and you apply it to your current proof, things like that, um, those are really big learning moments. You know, it's like when you have uh, a finite set of let's just say integers you can find the maximum of that set that's an idea that comes up and you see that idea in some topology proofs and that's an example of a reoccurring idea right say you have d sub 1 through d sub n you can take uh, the maximum or you could take the minimum anytime you have a finite set and again a reoccurring idea is something that happens a lot in topology proofs and other proofs as well so that's one of those uh, ideas. So you can learn from your successes. As far as failures, yeah, I, I think they teach you something. A lot of times you head down the wrong path and then you can look back and you can ask yourself, why was I even doing that? Why instead didn't I go here first? So once you figure out what the problem was, ask yourself, hey, wait a minute, why did I spend so much time doing that? Why didn't I just go here first? And that can be enlightening. You can You can improve your failures by using that train of thought. So hopefully that um, kind of answers uh, your question, Ida. And again, I'll repeat the question for anyone watching this. The question is, how essential can failure be while studying mathematics? It's a really interesting question. I, I saw the message and I thought, it's how essential can it be? So it's a very, very specific question. But yeah, it's definitely a part of mathematics. So this book here is a famous book on topology. It was written by Bert Mendelssohn. It's called Introduction to Topology, and it's the second edition. And here on the inside, you see owned and cherished in that order by N. Lincoln, fall 69. I think that is so cool. Who is N. Lincoln? And where is N. Lincoln today? Uh, are they still alive? Uh, did they get a degree? What was their degree in? I mean, these are the questions that I always ask when I see names in books like this. And it's it's part of the fun of, of being a collector of, of books, right? I collect math books, physics books, computer science books. I do have books on other subjects, and I, I've wanted to make videos on them, but this is a math channel, so I kind of hold back. You know, I do computer science, physics, you know, things that are related to math. Um, but yeah.
Bert Mendelssohn, Associate Professor of Mathematics, Smith College, Introduction to Topology, Second Edition. So this is a standard book on topology. It's got all of the basic content that you would study as a student, uh, as an undergrad. In order to read a book like this, if you're curious, you want to have um, background. You want to know how to write mathematical proofs. And ideally, you want to have a lot of math uh, behind you. I took topology my senior year uh, as an undergrad, and I already had like you know two courses in advanced calculus, a course in complex variables, a course in partial differential equations, two courses in mathematical statistics, two courses in proof writing because I took discrete math because I was a computer science major as well for a while. So, you know, I had a lot of background. So to me, it was a very easy class, but to my classmates. Uh, it was not. It was not. And the only reason was is not because I'm smart or not because, you know, I'm like some genius or something. Uh, it's because I had the background. And I, I think that that point is important to make. So if you buy a book like this, and I'll try to leave a link in the description. It's probably pretty inexpensive. It's a fairly popular book, very common classic book. Um, you're going to struggle with it, but that's expected. It starts off with the theory of sets, and then it goes into metric spaces, so a metric space is basically, um, it's called a metric space, when you have a set and you have a function um, called a metric. And so um, if you look at you know that space together with, that set together with the metric is called a metric space. Yeah, here it is, here. A pair of objects x comma d consisting of a non-empty set x and a function d from x cross x into r, where r is the set of real numbers, is called a metric space, right? So it's it's the um, it's both. It's the set and the function together. That that's the metric space, and d is the metric. It's called the distance function, and the classic example is the absolute value of x. That would be a metric on the set of real numbers, and the set of real numbers together with um, that function, that distance function, the absolute value of x, um, would be a metric space. Right. That's a that's probably the most common metric space. Uh, that you know. And so you already know what a metric space is. You just didn't know that people called it that. And there's also some conditions, uh, you know, for the metric, some axioms or, you know, pieces of the definition, if you will. So it talks about a theory of sets and then metric spaces. Then it goes on to topological spaces. So a metric is a top, a metric space is a topological space, but this is, it starts with the concrete definition, you know, it talks about metric spaces first and then more general topological spaces. And I think it does that to help eliminate abstraction. That's the thinking, at least. The thinking is that by introducing uh, metric spaces first and then topological spaces, you kind of have some examples in the back of your mind, and perhaps they can invoke those examples as they go through material. Four is on connectedness, and then five is on compactness, and that's it. That's it. There's no answers in the back of the book. It's just a clean, well-written book on topology. I got to give it a whiff. I'm sorry. Just, oh, so nice. So nice. So nice book on topology. Highly recommend it. Um, nothing negative to say about this book, right? Nothing negative, and it's inexpensive. Anyways, I just wanted to make a video to answer that question I received and show you a solid classic book on the study of topology. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Until next time, good luck and take care.